Welcome to another video everyone, my name is Leo Venus, I'm a medical doctor and a bioengineer and on this channel we talk about health, nutrition, lifestyle, pretty much anything we feel like talking about. For those of you who are not interested in looking like the Hulk, but you still want to find out what amount of exercise is going to promote longevity and promote a healthy life for you, then this is the video for you. Before we go on to the video though, make sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it so that you are notified every time I put out a new video. With that being said, let's jump right in. So the first question naturally then becomes what is the amount of exercise we should be aiming for if we're not looking to become a monster in the gym? And I have to say this, I have to admit this as a person who is trying to put on muscle, that being bulky and muscular is not actually necessarily the healthiest thing you can do. It is a look, it is something that you can strive for, but in terms of being optimally healthy, you're probably better off being a bit more lean and not having a huge frame. So that being said, what is the amount that we should aim for and especially as busy people right a lot of us don't have a lot of time but the good news is we actually don't need to be in the gym two hours a day to get the health benefits from exercise so the recommendations i'm going to give you comes from the department of health and human services which is an american governmental organization which deals with people's health and the reason i'm giving you their recommendations is because they have gone through a huge amount of data in order to come to these guidelines right here and remember that when we're dealing with big guidelines or recommendations around your health, it's best to go to the reputable sources, not my fitness magazine, bodybuilding.com or anything like this, right? So these people have gone through a huge, huge amount of data to come to these guidelines. And unless you plan on going through the thousands and thousands of papers yourself, this is the best source of information for you to use in your life. So here are the minimum requirements for adults. Number one, aerobic physical activity. This means basically cardio in everyday language. Get at least 150 minutes of moderate aerobic activity or 75 minutes of vigorous aerobic activity a week or a combination of moderate and vigorous activity. The guidelines suggest that you spread out this exercise during the course of a week. Greater amounts of exercise will provide even greater health benefit, but even small amounts of physical activity are helpful. Being active for short periods of time throughout the day can add up and provide health benefits. So if you're wondering what is the difference between moderate and vigorous intensity aerobic activity, well, the moderate is going to be a little bit less intense as you may have imagined from the wording. So this means things like brisk walking, things like swimming, well, at least swimming relatively slowly. If you're swimming fast, that would be more vigorous and things like mowing the lawn. Now the vigorous aerobic activity will then be the faster paced thing. So running, dancing, swimming, as we said, if you're swimming quickly in almost any sport, whether it be soccer, basketball, tennis, in other words, not golf. What about strength training then? This is another area that has come up as being very, very important, especially as we age, especially for taking care of our musculature, taking care of our joint health, and actually even increasing our bone density as we get older. So what are the minimum amounts? Well, the recommendations here are, do strength training exercises for all major muscle groups at least two times a week. Aim to do a single set of each exercise using a weight or resistance level heavy enough to tire your muscles after about 12 to 15 repetitions. So again, Again, massively under what most people think they require in terms of going to the gym and having two hour workouts. You can actually just do a single set for each major muscle group as long as you're getting really tired after 12, 15 reps and then you do all the muscle groups twice a week. You could do this in two workouts. So full body workout one day, full body workout another day, do all the muscle groups. That's all you require to get the health benefits. Obviously, if you're trying to build muscle optimally, you want to get more volume in, but for the health benefits, you don't really need to be a gym rat. Another thing to think about is that it's not required of you to go to the gym and pump iron. Actually, you don't need to lift weights. You can do things like resistance bands. You can do body weight exercise. You can do yoga, Pilates. I don't know why I said Pilates like that, but it's a completely legitimate form of resistance training. A lot of beautiful women do Pilates. Another thing to keep in mind is that children actually require more physical activity. So if you have children, get them outdoors, get them active, get them moving their bodies every single day, no excuses. And when it comes to pregnant women, this is another area where there's a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people, oh, you're pregnant, come here, sit down, rest, just be careful. But no, actually, pregnant women are supposed to move their bodies as well. So the recommendations are actually pretty much the same as for adults otherwise. If you're doing really high impact sports, if you're like a gymnastics or doing something that has a lot of shock, then maybe it is wise to look at changing that, talking to your healthcare provider or doing some research over what kinds of exercise you should avoid if you are pregnant. Maybe, like I said, if you're doing like something crazy like gymnastics, maybe better to do some Pilates again. As you can see, it doesn't take a huge amount to get the health benefits that you want from exercise. And if you're a very busy person, if you have a very busy schedule, 
Look, you can do 15 minutes, even 15 minutes of a vigorous intensity aerobic activity every single day. That's going to get you above the 75 minute mark per week. So whether you want to wake up 15 or 20 minutes earlier to get an intense workout in the beginning of the day, or if you want to do it during your lunch break or when you get home, it doesn't take a huge time window. We can all prioritize our health enough to make sure that that time window is in. And then plus those two times a week resistance workouts where you're doing all the major muscle groups. And again, it doesn't have to be a huge workout. You can actually just do one really heavy set for each muscle group and you're getting the health benefits there as well. Now, the last tip that I'm going to give is perhaps the most important tip of all, because this is something that you want to be doing for the rest of your life. The results, the consequences, the benefits that are coming to you will only come if you do this on a consistent basis. And in order to do that for the rest of your life, the most important thing is going to be to find something you can enjoy doing, right? Something that you can look forward to, something that you can come out of, say, that felt good, rather than be always thinking, oh, it's going to be such a drag and I just don't want to do this. Oh, it's today is Pilates day. <laughs> Why am I giving Pilates such a hard time today? Pilates can be a ton of fun. It does not matter what kind of exercise. You just need to find something that you enjoy doing. And that way it will be much easier for you to make that a sustainable habit for the long run. That's pretty much it for this video. And as I always do say, please do eat your vegetables, do that, but don't, don't become a vegetable, okay? Couch potatoes are not as healthy as running potatoes. So do become a running potato. I don't know where I was going with that. Anyways, take this information, do whatever you want with it, and I'll see you guys in the next video.